Hello everyone, and today I'll be talking about the Russian aviation industry and how the ongoing World Cup will affect its prospects. And before I begin, this is an old video actually. Some of the information might be old. Now this is a new area for me in terms of making this sort of video, so I'll explain the reasoning and stuff later on. So let's get started with the topic first. You may or may not know uh, that Russia actually has seen strong growth in its aviation sector. Seed growth has traditionally correlated with GDP growth. These figures might not be as impressive when compared to those from China, India, Indonesia, but Russia holds its own because of high growth despite a stagnating economy. Uh, so let's discuss the domestic trends. All top 30 Russian domestic routes include one of the three main Moscow airports, which are SVO, DME, and VKO. Uh, just to give some context, here's a half map of Russia. This is the European part of Russia. And as inappropriate as it might look, I've highlighted some of the areas that will be mentioned in the coming slides. I recommend you pause right now because I won't be discussing this. Assuming you saw the map, the busiest city pair in Russia is Moscow to St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia with about 6 million people. This route has seen strong growth of 22% in 2016. Routes from Moscow to cities near the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea from the map before are growing at the national average, which is about 15-20% to per annum. You can see here how the Russian aviation industry is centralizing out of Moscow, more and more centralization, and also Moscow being in the top 30 domestic routes. I'll also show you the busiest airports in Russia. You can see that apart from Moscow and St. Petersburg, no other cities can match the seat figures. And in total, Russian population is about 120 million. So it's kind of unusual that you only have two cities and um, all the cities a lot smaller. The big cities are growing just as fast as the small ones, so the smaller towns will keep playing catch up. Here's some extra information, this might be overwhelming, so I'll keep it short. Domestic growth has recently overtaken international growth. This could have been due to the sanctions in 2014, but international growth is now recovering. Ukraine, Germany and Turkey are the top three international markets out of Russia, with services to Turkey recording the fastest growth of any country. Russian aviation industry is also equally divided between domestic and international, which might be seem uh, unintuitive for a country with the, which has the largest area in the world. Now that I've given you the general profile on the Russian aviation industry, I'll now talk about the effects of the World Cup on Russia. After all, that is the title. The World Cup was estimated to bring in an additional 3.5 million visitors. Last year, 2017, the country saw 22.5 million visitors. And um, for this year's World Cup, we might get a figure closer to what Russia witnessed in 2013, which supported around a million jobs and was about 27 million visitors. However, Brazil in 2014 recorded a 25% rise in tourists, while Russia is doing about 15% at best. But these are just predictions and we couldn't know for certain until next year. Now for a few minutes, uh, you heard me go on and on about growth, but what does this growth actually look like? I'm sorry I haven't included domestic examples, but here are some international examples. Uh, just two days before the World Cup, Gulf Air sent a 787 to Moscow from Bahrain. Emirates added a third daily service to Moscow from late October. Korean Air is sending sent a 777 for the first two weeks of the World Cup instead of a usual A330. And they also began service to St. Petersburg with a 777 from Seoul. And British Airways will begin flying again to... Um, SVO, the second Moscow airport, after June uh, 2003, they already fly to DME with a 787. As I'm about to explain, this phenomenal growth that we have witnessed in Russia is not without its challenges. From these bars, you can see that except for Germany, the travel demand is coming from Russians mostly, signaling that foreign tourists are not as interested in visiting Russia. This year, due to the World Cup, we could see the data will be um, skewed a bit to a foreign point of sale. However, this is most likely only for one year. As you know, Russia currently has sanctions placed on it by the US and the EU since 2014. This has impeded the country's growth and there's talks of further sanctions recently, so we can see this um, 15 to 20% seed growth slow down in the coming years. I hope you like my first try at this. Obviously, there's a huge room for improvement and I hope that the more presentations I make, the better I get at talking and stuff. I also plan on buying a mic once I get to make a few more videos of these. Um, and one of my biggest aims is to ensure that there's no bias by me. And also, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I plan on um, covering different areas and about trends, particularly. At least that's the plan for now. And I'll let you know if anything happens. 
And also thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.